in the city of Christchurch. At least 49 people are dead, many others seriously wounded. I think something like this could happen in New Zealand. Well, in Christchurch of all places, we're such a small community. We're so kind and loving, so I just don't understand why someone would hurt us like this in, in such a way. It is clear that this can now only be described as a terrorist attack. I'm sure by now you've all seen the news. I have friends from Christchurch and they've spoken about how loving of a community it is, how close-knit, and how they couldn't believe something like this could happen now. And while I won't name the monster, I will talk about the threat, about who he is. He was a terrorist, a terrorist radicalized on the internet. And his ideology, white supremacy. How do we know that? Because people are doing backflips to avoid talking about it. To avoid talking about the threat it poses to society. A threat that resulted in 49 people losing their lives because of this hatred. A hatred that has been allowed to fester and grow, both in the cesspools of the internet and on the largest platforms across the world. But wait, we're not supposed to talk about the repercussions of such hatred because the whole, oh, he's not the right type of terrorist thing. No, 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 I don't buy that. And you know why? Because just imagine for one second, the shooter was Muslim. You think people would be saying, don't talk about him? Or do you think they'd already be knee deep in his third cousin's Twitter archive, sifting through every last post? White supremacists and white nationalists seem to be the only terrorists nobody wants to talk about. Why? This ideology and myth of white genocide has led to the Norway mass murder, the Charleston mass murder, Charlottesville march and murder, Pittsburgh mass murder, Quebec mass murder, and now New Zealand mass murder. Yeah, that seems like it should be something worth looking into. Not to forget that according to statistics, white supremacists accounted for 100% of Americans murdered by terrorists in 2018. But why should we talk about that, right? I mean, we've got fake emergencies at the border to focus on. And some, as I'm about to show you in arguably the most sickening statement I have ever seen in the face of tragedy, will blame the victims for their own murders. An Australian senator whose name doesn't deserve the breath it takes to say it, released his condemnation of the attack by offering condolences and then going on to say it's a result of Muslims migrating to the country. <laughs> and people wonder why hatred like this spreads and marinates in the most horrid ways. Because it doesn't just come from the dark corners of the web. It comes from the most powerful figures in the world. Oh yeah, some like, what's his name? Oh yeah, the president of the United States. Oh, we're not supposed to talk about that right now because we're supposed to just forget that he called for the banning of an entire religion of people. Donald J. Trump is calling for a total and complete shutdown of Muslims entering the United States. We're supposed to just forget that he shared hoax videos from his Twitter account whilst president inciting hatred towards Muslims and has said, Islam hates us. I'm sorry, but I just can't forget that. I think Islam hates us. But we're not supposed to bring that up because apparently it's what the shooter wanted is to divide us. The only thing is, we are divided. On the issue of tolerance towards the Muslim community, we are very divided. And that division is a result of fear mongering Islamophobia and relentless need to incite hatred towards Muslims. So ask yourself, who has spearheaded such a divide? You think because the animal who did this claims he was influenced by a wide variety of political ideologies, that means every political group has to look at their role in society? The man walked into a mosque to cleanse his state of Muslims. <laughs> His actions resemble pretty much that of a man who is anti-Muslim. Actions that stem from a hatred towards that group of people. A group of people that have been vilified, not by both sides of the political sphere, but by one side. And if you spend more time trying to avoid talking about the repercussions of such hatred, rather than addressing this threat, you're part of the problem. Because words have consequences. Hate mongering of a religion, scapegoating of immigrants and minorities has consequences. Never miss another breakdown video by ringing the bell below. You'll get notified whenever we publish something new. And don't forget to join TYT today. Download our TYT Plus app on your phone or head over to tyt.com slash join.